But we were living a life that was impossible to live. That Damocles soared over our head. It was too precarious. But in certain cases, people got killed, and it was a sense of a loss of security. People felt that they couldn't walk the streets anymore. And it's hard to turn that into dollars and cents and, and to somehow quantize that, but it's there, it's a feeling. And that feeling has gone away. The Gazans were nice enough to tell us during the war in 2014 that at nine o'clock we're gonna turn the skies over Tel Aviv into fire. So at a quarter to nine, people will go and put the popcorn in their ovens and take out their lawn chairs and sit down and watch the Sound of Light show. You're putting yourself at risk and people didn't care. The whole terrorist threat was thrown out the window. It was rendered irrelevant. It's an Iron Dome did that. <laughs> Iron Dome protects large urban areas from what we call high volume rocket fire. We had naysayers that said either it couldn't be done, because what you're trying to do is technologically too advanced for what you can do, or that there are better ways of doing it. We had had certain um, success using a laser in, uh, in another program, and they said, well, you have success, why don't you just continue down that path? They said, why don't you use a cannon? Because the Americans are out there in the Middle East and they're using a cannon. It's good enough for them. It should be good enough for you. We proved that the laser and the cannon had essentially critical faults that, that would not enable their usage. And we were left with being essentially the only solution that was viable, technologically difficult. Yes, but viable, yes. And that was a driving factor. We realized early on that we would need American assistance, be it financial, and we invited them to come along. The American um, Army sent a group of scientists over and they were given a deep dive. And their response was that it was too high risk. And our um, request for support was denied and we did it ourselves. Now, when the thing started to work, the, Amer the, the United States of America, I mean, completely, they, they, were, they, were, they supported it to the tune of more than $1.3 billion to date. But when it came to developing the system, not one American dollar went into it. The, it was 100% Israeli shekels. It was probably the fastest developed system I've ever seen in my life. Similar systems take three to five times as long, 10 years, 15 years for a system to come up. It took us three and a half years and the system was up defending everybody. Like I always say, when your backyard's on fire, then you do things you wouldn't necessarily do and you work quicker. Many people in the United States of America travel a greater distance to work than is the width of our country. A large percentage of the country lives within 50 kilometers, which is about um, 30 miles from Gaza or the Lebanese border. So you're talking about 80% um, of, uh, of the country's population, which is living in, in range of rocket fire. And these guys have rockets that are really no great shakes. These rockets don't travel that far. They're technologically dumb and you can put them together in your basement and you can terrorize large swaths of our population. You have a city, you have people living in the city, you have people living on the other side of the border who do not like the people living in the city, and they open fire on them with rockets. Now these rockets have what's called a warhead, which is like a bomb, and a rocket's really a way of taking your warhead from point A to point B. They fire the, 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 the rockets over, many of them, until Iron Dome came in. We were, we really held hostage. Wherever these things landed, they blow up and do whatever damage they did. Kill people, injure people, um, destroy property. In 2006, they chased a million people out of their homes in the north of the country. Iron Dome intercepts these rockets so that they do not land, their warhead blows up in the air, and um, the people that are on the ground are free to continue their lives. This thing lives and breathes on computers. And the computers are necessary for the calculation of where the bad guy is going to be, and what's the best way for us to get there to greet it and destroy it. I mean, there's so many people in so many countries that want to share the love with us by throwing rockets with bombs in it. There are bombs that are coming from next door and bombs that are coming from way out in Iran. The problem is that the further you throw one of these things, the harder it is to catch. It's like a baseball. If I'm going to throw a ball from, from the pitcher's mound, then it's easy for the catcher to catch. If I'm going to throw that ball from the right field corner, I mean, that ball's going to be coming in really, really fast and I need a good catcher to catch it. Same thing with this. Same thing with missiles. So if I built a system that could take care of the hardest missiles, the ones that are coming from farthest away, 
That'd be an expensive system, and it would be overkill for all the easy stuff. So what we do in Israel is we split the sky into levels, and the lowest level is Iron Dome. And that takes care of stuff that's coming to about 40 miles out. If you're standing more than 40 miles out and you fire a rocket at us, then our solution, our response will not be with Iron Dome. Our response will be with the next layer up, and that's, um, where is it? That's David's sling. Iron Dome's mission is not to bring peace. Iron Dome's mission is to protect us against people who want to kill us. It is very mobile. These things don't sit like this. We actually put them in canisters. The canisters sit in five packs, like a cluster. And you take the cluster of five, you stick it on the back of a truck and put another and another and another and another, and it truck drives away, goes up to the battery, and they just pick the thing up off of it and drop it on the launcher, and we're all happy. Iron Dome gives the Israeli army the chance to not be forced into doing things the way it was in the summer of 2006, where we simply couldn't stop the rocket fire and we had to start pouring forces into, um, into Lebanon. In the most basic way, I hate to sound trite, but Iron Dome saves lives. And it doesn't only save the lives of the people that are being fired at. I mean, that's, that's simple. But understanding that Iron Dome being so effective prevents a response, and that response could be deadly. Israel, in many cases, attacks Gaza only when we've been fired at. And when we're fired at and damage has been done, there is more of a reason to either punitively or preemptively hit the Gazans. And when that happens, way more people die on their side than died on our side. But Iron Dome prevents the necessity of that. Oh, they fired something at us. And you wake up in the, in the morning and you hear that, that three people were killed by rocket fire, then you think one thing. When you hear that Iron Dome shot down another rocket, well, that's fine, you keep on going. You don't expect a response because there is none. And there is none, then lives are saved on our side and an order of magnitude more of lives are saved on their side. Technologically, we're at the biting edge and there's a lot of stuff we do here which is really, really cool. We're defending State of Israel and there's always an understanding that, especially with Iron Dome, you're protecting the homeland. We were going in and out of bomb shelters in the order of nine times a day. And I'm talking about a large percentage of Israel's own population, from Tel Aviv, Jerusalem, or Beersheba, cities that are, that are five to 10 miles from Gaza, nine times a day. Well, we were living a life that was impossible to live. That Damocles soared over our head. It was too precarious. But in certain cases, people got killed and it was a sense of a loss of security. People felt that they couldn't walk the streets anymore. And it's hard to turn that into dollars and cents and, and to somehow quantize that, but it's there, it's a feeling. And that feeling has gone away. Israelis are getting used to living under the new reality, and that was rocket fire. And now they're getting used to living under the reality of Iron Dome. Damocles' sword is not leaving, that's just, the way we live, and we're going to continue making it possible for Israel to continue to be the most amazing startup nation and a great place to raise your kids that it is. That's my job. It was a miracle of biblical proportions. In 1948, Israel became a nation. The Jews had a homeland. Of course, at the time, this promised land was not exactly flowing with milk and honey. Much of the territory was sand dunes and swamps, and yet 70 years later, and today Israeli businesses are booming. Their farmland is diverse and fertile. They are leading the world in technological innovation. Israel did not just adapt to survive, they invented and thrived. Thank you for joining us as we provide a spiritual insight of what God is doing in Israel and in the Middle East. If you want to learn more about what God is doing in Israel, make sure to visit us on our webpage and follow us on social media. Shalom, and God bless you for Jerusalem.